Hi everyone, welcome to Netgate Chemistry. So today we are starting the topic excitation theory. First of all, what is excitation? Excitation means promotion of electron from the orbital of lower energy to the orbital of higher energy. This is very basic. I think you'll be knowing that. So now we'll start what is excitation theory. What is excitation theory? For that, I'll take an example. That is the simplest example, which is your CH4. How the CH4 is formed? So what we do, we take carbon. The electronic configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Consider the valence shell. 2s2 and 2p2. Okay, so suppose we are not knowing about the excitation theory. So if we look at the valence shell configuration, so according to that, only two bonds can be formed by the carbon. But actually, carbon forms four bonds. That is, it is tetravalent. So, yes, carbon can form only two bonds, but how is it tetravalent? So, we say that this one electron is excited and goes to this orbital and then it forms four bonds. That is why carbon is tetravalent. But why this electron is excited to this orbital? that we want to find out one reason can be that the excitation this excitation requires very less amount of energy that is why the electron always goes to this orbital and the carbon forms four bonds and is tetravalent in nature so this could happen so now we are going to study about the types of excitations the types types are actually two one is your free excitation which was the your case of methane next is your forced excitation for example in your case of pf5 that we'll study later on in case of free excitation as i told you there is requirement of less energy that is there is less energy difference between the orbitals less energy <coughs> difference or gap <coughs> between orbitals Okay, and here the gap is initially high, initially high energy gap between orbitals, which is contracted afterwards. And this is our actually next topic. Next is conditions or excitation.
there are two conditions for excitation first is a primary condition which is availability of vacant orbitals in both post as well as free excitation because only if there are vacant orbitals then the electron will excite next is secondary condition which is your low energy gap between the orbitals so these are your two conditions for excitation now we have to understand how energy gap is contracted which is explained by charge contraction theory charge contraction theory before that we should know that if a is an atom which has size this much and radius r then a positive will be of this much size having radius r dash and a negative will be of this size having radius r double dash so the trend of radius will be r dash then r then r double dash okay why because in case of a positive the nuclear charge is more because there is less electron density so electrons are pulled towards the nucleus more efficiently here the electron density in the valence shell is more so nuclear charge is not that prominent so the valence shell expands now we are going to study about the formation of ph3 and pf5 see this is formed due to actually no excitation there is no excitation here there is forced excitation and also there is contraction so for ph3 first take the electronic configuration of phosphorus valence shell electronic configuration 3s2 3p3 3d 0 this is the electronic configuration of phosphorus you have three hydrogens get attached and your ph3 is formed but in case of pf5 this does not happen In case of your PF5, the excitation is conditional or forced. What happens here? Consider the valence shell of phosphorus 3s2, 3p3, 3d0. this electron is excited
and then five F are attached. But the question is why this excitation takes place? What is this forced excitation? What is this forced excitation and what causes this forced excitation? Okay, for that charge contraction theory comes into the picture. So suppose this is an atom A. This is the nucleus. This is your fully filled penultimate shell. See, the last shell is your valence shell. This is your nth. N minus one nth shell is your penultimate. And n minus two with is your anti penultimate shell. Okay, this is your fully filled penultimate shell. This is your ns, and this is your np. Now, what happens? This nucleus attracts this. Ns electrons towards itself and also Np electrons towards itself. So what happens? See, this Ns goes towards the nucleus and this Np also goes towards the nucleus. What happens? This energy gap between them is more, more gap because N is attracted more towards the nucleus and P is attracted comparatively less towards the nucleus. Due to symmetry issues that we have studied earlier. Okay. But what happens in case of A positive? A positive, which is smaller actually, this is bigger and this is smaller. Although I have made it bigger, but it is smaller. Okay. See, this is the nucleus. This is your fully filled penultimate shell. This is your NS. And suppose this is your ND. This is NS, this is ND, this is your penultimate shell. What happens? This NS goes towards the nucleus. This ND also goes towards the nucleus. But what happens? When it's reaching towards the nucleus, it is also reaching towards the penultimate shell. So this penultimate shell starts to repel this NS when it goes very much closer to this penultimate shell but nd is not closer to the penultimate shell so it goes on and on towards the nucleus so what happens at the end this ns has reached here and this nd has reached here now because it is not feeling any repulsion right now due to this penultimate shell so there is lesser energy gap So what has happened, this ND has gone towards the nucleus very much and this is known as contraction. This is known as contraction or you can say charge contraction. This is what happens in case of PF5. If you see your PF bond, then F is most electronegative in nature. It is very very electronegative and carries delta negative charge it carries delta positive charge if we consider pf5 then it has 5f attached to it all the 5f are taking the electron density towards themselves and the making the phosphorus delta positive so due to the accumulation of this positive charge this contraction takes place and due to this contraction formation of pf5 takes place this is a very important concept and it has many applications also we are going to study about the application part in the next video thank you so much